JBL. Welcome to Scotland. How's the trip going so far? So far, so good. The, the, the weather is perfect, uh, perfectly Scottish. Uh, bad. <laughs> or at least bad for me. It's actually a pretty good day today. It's uh, just a little colder than what I'm used to. I live in Bermuda, so anything uh, that's not about 70 degrees is uh, considered bad weather to me. I've become soft in my old age. So where did you first see rugby and what attracted it to you? I first saw rugby, my college sweet mate played for South Africa, not on a, a major level, but played rugby in South Africa. That's the first I heard of it. But back then in Texas, where I went to college, nobody, there was rugby nowhere. Uh, now you're seeing some in Texas. But when I was uh, starting to run a program in Bermuda for at-risk kids, gang type kids, we needed a, a sport that we could play that was physical and rugby was just perfect. Not just the integrity and the respect of rugby, but also the fact that you just need a ball and you can play five on five or 15 on 15. It's a perfect game to play, especially for say lower income or at risk kids, because you don't need a lot of equipment. And plus it's a physical game, so they're able to get that aggression out. So it's in Bermuda, your charity work. Can you tell us a wee bit more about it? Yeah, we're uh, in Bermuda. Uh, last, uh, two years ago, we got the NACRO award out of 7,000 program 17 countries best for working with at-risk kids uh, we started up the program six years ago we now have about 400 kids playing rugby every week now not all of those are in our main programs we have about hundred to 120 in our main programs um, and start up the program just to keep kids uh, in school and out of gangs and we've been very fortunate uh, in what we're doing so far that we've we've had a lot of success but that comes from a lot of volunteers. This is truly something that's been embraced by the island of Bermuda. And when can we expect a first Bermudan player to put on a Glasgow shirt? I would love for a Bermuda player to put on a Glasgow shirt. We actually have our first player this year that's actually leaving Ireland because of his ability, a young man named Michael Deal, and he's going to Stellenbosch Academy down in South Africa. And he's our first one that we've been able to get noticed. A few years ago, we had a few that probably could have, could have played somewhere. Uh, we didn't have the ability to get their name out there. And so we're getting better about getting their name out there. So I would love for a uh, Bermuda player to come over and be in the uh, academy or, or be a, a Glasgow Warrior one day. So last year you visited the Rugby World Cup. And um, What game did you take in and how was the atmosphere on the occasion? The atmosphere for the Rugby World Cup was phenomenal. I went to the Welsh uh, South Africa game. It, it was a phenomenal game. If you remember that incredible offload right there at the end, I was sitting right on that end of the field. The problem was I was with a Welshman. So, so, so we, he didn't want to do anything afterwards because uh, his team lost. But to me, it was fascinating. It was such a, an incredible atmosphere. There's nothing like rugby. I played American football my whole life. I, I love American football. Take nothing away from the, the sport I played. Rugby to me is, is a brotherhood. It's, it's a teammanship that you don't get anywhere else. And it's the going to the games, you feel that. You feel like you're part of the team. And I don't think, I don't know if you get that anywhere else in sport. If given the chance, it's definitely a sport you would have played. Oh, I'd love to have played rugby. I would have loved to. I, I watch our kids play all the time. You know, I turned 50 this month, so the, the, that ship sailed. <laughs> I certainly hope it has. Uh, I'd love, would have loved to have the opportunity to play rugby. You made the move from wrestler to commentator. What advice would you give to any rugby players thinking of doing the same thing? The biggest thing when you go from, say, uh, playing a sport to either coaching or being a commentator is you got to be able to remove yourself from that sport. I coached one year when I was 22, American football. I wasn't far enough away from the game to be a good coach. I think I'd be a better coach now because I'm able to remove myself from it. When I first did commentary in, I think, 2005, I was still had the mindset of uh, a performer instead of a mindset of a commentator. I now have the mindset of just the old guy looking at the sport and calling it like the, the fans want to see it or heard it, hear it called. And so the biggest thing I can tell guys is if you're going to go into commentary or going to go into coaching, you have to remove yourself from the game first and realize that you're no longer an active participant in the game, that your role has changed and accept that role and you'll have a lot more success. We have um, USA Internationals, Greg Peterson and Lange Lange, Halpia Kui here. How long do you think the, before the USA becomes a real force in world rugby? You know, I'm excited. I, I thought our sevens team uh, in the Olympics could have done a little better. Uh, we played great against the Fijians. Uh, I think 24-19 was the score. Uh, we slipped up against Argentina, who's a great side. I, I thought we had a chance of winning that game, and so we didn't make the KO round. I think we're sixth in the world right now in sevens. 
and 15s were consistently in the mid-teens. I think the key is going to be the professional rugby league that's going on in the States right now. And from what I understand, talking to uh, Nigel Melville, the old uh, CEO of USA Rugby, is coaching is the biggest thing because athletes will come. So I think w the coaching, it's getting to the professional level uh, in, in most aspects in the United States. I think you're going to start seeing athletes follow. I hope you're able to compress time with that because I hope the league does well. But right now, young kids that have ability, they want to go play American football. They want to go into MMA. They want to go into basketball. Rugby is way down the list. I think that pro league is going to move that up the list a little bit. And if you see that, I think you'll see America start being more competitive. I'd love to see us be a top 10 team uh, in the next few years, which I think is reasonable. You know, to, to play against England or, or Scotland or the All Blacks or the Aussies, I think is unreasonable for a number of years. But to get in the top 10, I think is reasonable in the next few years. What can I, the Glasgow Warriors fans expect from a WWE show? atmosphere that uh, is made for families but also made for a lot of young kids who just love showing up with their signs and, and their chants and, and being part of the show. Very few places can you be part of a show. With WWE, we not only want fans to be there, we want them to be part of the show. And finally, who do you think is tougher, wrestlers or rugby players? <laughs> this is a rugby social media, so I better say rugby players because I've got too many friends in uh, Bermuda that are rugby players. That, are <laughs> that, you know, rugby to me, people ask me all the time about American football and, and rugby, the difference. Rugby is a really tough sport. American football is kind of a, is a vicious sport. You know, the guys try to knock each other out uh, instead of tackle. You take out the helmet to helmet rule, and all of a sudden that's changed. So, who is tougher between, say, professional football, rugby, or wrestlers? Uh, I'm, I'm 50 years old this month, so I better, I better leave that alone.